Hey friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Victoria and today I'm going to be talking about some of my favorite new authors from 2023. We are back with end of the year content. I love doing end of the year content and looking back at my reading from the entire year and seeing all of the books that made me feel so happy and all of the new authors that I can learn to absolutely love and it's just one of my favorite things to film. I think that this is going to be a really fun video. I'm excited to talk about all of these authors maybe you guys can find some new authors to love. But yeah, I'm just gonna go into it. So I didn't grab any books for this video. I just sat down and turned the camera on. So I'm just gonna put pictures and everything. I'm talking more about the authors. Anyway, the first one that I'm going to start with is of course Elsie Silver. I started reading Elsie Silver this year. I read the entire Chestnut Spring series and I read the first book in her previous series, which I think is called Gold Rush Ranch. The rest of the Gold Rush Ranch series doesn't have an audiobook, so I haven't read them yet, but all of them have uh, are coming out hopefully next year. She has talked talked about how all of them are going to be in production and they're all going to be made into audiobooks. So super excited about that. But I loved the Chestnut Spring series. This year, uh, Heartless and Reckless are both absolute five-star reads that I loved so, so much. And the rest of the series was so fun. They are just so sweet and swoony and spicy and so great to connect with. The small town that she created with Chestnut Springs is just so lovable and it made me just so happy to read that series. It put a serious smile on my face and I'm just so so happy that she has gotten so popular. I think it's amazing for her and I didn't even I had never even heard of her before last year like the end of last year when people started reading Chestnut Springs and now she has been picked up by Bloom. All of her Gold Rush Rant series and her Crescent uh, Chestnut Spring series are being traditionally published which I think is just so fantastic. I love seeing authors just like make it big and I am so excited to see what comes from her in 2024. She already has one book that she has is going to be releasing with Bloom called Wild Love and the cover looks so cute. I'll show it here. I actually really like the cover, the paperback cover that's going to be in stores. I usually am a couple cover and while her couple cover is gorgeous and I'm a little sad I won't be able to buy that one at least Wild Love's alternate cover that's going to be in stores is so pretty. It's my favorite of all of her alternate covers yet and I am just so so happy that I started reading them. These are cowboy romances and she has so many great tropes. Flawless is a annoyance to lovers. Um, the hero is a cowboy. He is a bull rider and the heroine has is his PR person and has to follow him around and they fall in love. It's great. Heartless is a single dad nanny romance that I just, it's absolutely gorgeous. Powerless is a childhood friends to lovers and so sweet and the hero is a hockey player in that one. Reckless, which is my all-time favorite in the series, is a actually surprise pregnancy one and the heroine in that one is just my absolute favorite and I connected with her so strongly. The hero is absolutely swoonworthy. His name is Theo and one of my favorite book boyfriends from this year for sure. And then Hopeless is a fake dating marriage of convenience or like engagement of convenience romance and I'm just so happy with the whole series and you should definitely pick them up. Don't be afraid of the hype. They are actually well deserving of it. The next author that I have is very different from Chelsea Silver and that is Kelly Fox. I became a hundred percent obsessed with Kelly Fox in the beginning of the year in around like March or April. I went on a whole ass binge and read like 10 of her books in a row. I started with the Mobsters and Billionaires series, which is a series of mobsters falling for billionaires. And it's all these ones that are like billionaires who, very high powered billionaires, and they're all MM, but all of the heroes are, are high powered billionaires who fall for um, people who are associated with the mafia. So people who are either heads of the mafia or in the mafia, or one of them is somebody who's trying to get out of the mafia. And they're so, so good and so addicting. They reminded me a lot of the necessary Evil series by Anlee James, which is actually why I started reading them. Somebody in my comments commented that if I liked Necessary Evils that I should try the Mobsters and Billionaires series and they were so right. So if you like Necessary Evils and like that MM kind of like adorable psychopath vibe, 
I think mobsters and billionaires is a great alternative, a great um, follow-up if you like, sorry, my nose is so itchy. There's like cat hair on it. If you like Necessary Evils. And then after I read Mobsters and Billionaires, I read two other of her series and they are just so good, so fun. All of them are MM. All of them have this like great morally gray type characters who fall for really sweet heroes and it's just so cute, so great, and it makes me so happy when I read them. I feel like that is a common theme for all of the authors on this list. They all of their books when I read them just made me so in happy and I love that and so if you want an MM looking for a new MM author definitely check out Kelly Fox because her books are so fun. Another MM author actually is C.E. Ritchie. I started reading her books when I read Iced Out this year and that is a enemies to lovers hockey romance and it was so fun but I think my favorite of her books is the second one to Iced Out which I don't even remember what it's called. It's called Caught Stealing and it's another one that is a uh, college sports romance. I really really loved this one. Um, it was just so fun and I loved Ice Out but this one was just I just was in a really higher mood for it I guess and I also read Don't You Dare from her which is outside of the Ice Out series. That was a friends to lovers one and also MM and it was so good. I've heard she has really good like more angsty emotional ones that I really want to try. I think one is called Head Above Water, I'm pretty sure. And she just has such a cool vibe and her books are so enjoyable to read. And I've only read her like more uh, sports type ones, but I'd love to, like I said, get into her like angsty emotional ones. So I'm hoping that I can do that in 2024, but she is such a fun new author and I'm so happy that I read her. The next one is Neva Altaj who writes the Perfectly Imperfect series. I've been reading this series this year and I love it so, so much. Shout out to Avery from Ava's Romance Books for putting me on to Neva Altaj. She was the first one that I saw talk about her, but Neva Altaj is a mafia uh, writer and she writes the Perfectly Imperfect series which is a series of different mafia books. They're all decently short. They're like just 300 pages if not less and they have really amazing tropes. Arranged marriage, age gap, uh, morally gray heroes and each of the books features like damaged characters really well. A lot of them feature characters with disabilities or with mental struggles um, and anxiety and depression. Um, and they have heroes who are in the mafia who are uh, wheelchair users who are um, amputees and who are scarred and they push the boundaries of masculinity and have these characters who normally wouldn't hold, stereotypically wouldn't hold roles in high-powered roles in the mafia because they use a wheelchair or because they are amputees and um, have a uh, prosthetic or things like that and they really show that they are just as badass, just as morally gray, just as powerful with these disabilities and I love that and I think it's great and it's one of my favorite series for sure this year. I have such a fun time with it. I read almost all of the audiobooks but the last two that I've read I read on ebook and her audiobooks are done really well. The ebooks are so good. I had such a good time with them and I would highly highly recommend reading her. I don't even know if she has another series um, but I definitely have to look into it more because the Perfectly Imperfect series I'm almost entirely finished with so I'm going to have to hope that she has more books outside of that. <laughs> Next one that I have is Laura Pavlov. I became obsessed with Laura Pavlov this year. She is one of my new all-time favorite authors and she writes contemporary small town romances and they are so fucking good. I m met her at Wild and Windy in, in in Chicago in I think that was in May and I met her there. I had never read any of her books but I stood in line and I met her and she was so sweet and nice and then between then and when I saw her in June the next month only a couple of weeks later I had read seven or eight of her books. I had already like solidified my obsession with her. I read 
all of the Cottonwood Cove series, which is one of my all-time favorite series now. It is probably one of my top favorite series from 2023. I adore it with my whole heart, but I also read her series before that, and I also read her series before that. Um, so I have to look up what they're called because I never remember, but I read her whole Cottonwood Cove series, and I read her whole series that follows her the, the sisters, which is the Honey Mountain series, and then I also read her... Montgomery Brothers series and I just have such a good time with her books. They're so so sweet and swoony and the heroes are just ugh, to die for and the heroines are so strong and have such epic personalities and her they just make me so happy and I love them with my whole heart. I am sad that the Cottonwood Cove series is over, but I'm so excited for her new series that starts with Loving Romeo. It was just, I just talked about that book on my anticipated releases for 2024 video that came out last week, I think. And I will uh, link it in the description if you haven't seen it yet. But I am so excited for that series. We met the hero in that one in uh, on the shore from the Cottonwood Cove series. So I'm so excited. I think it's going to be so good. And I adore her so, so much. I have a shelf um, here. So like I have my like actual bookshelves and then I have this shelf over here off camera that you can't see that's like cubes um, and that's where I hold some of my favorite authors and I have like their books and then I have a picture of them that I printed out and framed from when I was at met them at signings and so I have like Chloe Leese there I have Tate James there I have Kennedy Ryan there and I also made a little Laura Pavlov cubby so so cute and I I just love it so much. I love her so much and oh god I'm so happy. Another one is another new favorite for sure and that is Hannah Bonham Young. I read Next of Kin and Next to You Next to You this year and I also read Set the Record Straight and I absolutely loved them. Set the Record Straight and Next of Kin I gave five stars. Next of Kin is one of the sweetest books that I've read and I am so in love with that book. I just think that that is such an amazing romance and such an amazing found family story and I think that the stuff that they talk about in that book is so important and I love it so so much and I need to read out on a limb I actually just got it for my birthday oh it's I thought it was right here I don't see it um but Avery from Ava's Romance Books gifted it to me for my birthday so I have it in my stack of like books to haul and I am so happy to have it and I have the audiobook I just haven't read it yet I'm hoping to read it before the end of the year. Avery has said that that is one of her favorite books of the year so I think that that could end up potentially being one of mine if I read it before the end of the year but I'm really really excited to read it and I love the way that she writes her books. I love the way that she talks about her characters and the way her characters are um, deal with their uh, anxiety and their mental struggles and I just love it so so much and I think it's such a sweet romance um, and I think that she writes such sweet romances and I'm so happy to have read her this year. The next one that I have is SJ Tilly who writes the Alliance series. That's where I first fell in love with her. I read SJ Tilly at the absolute perfect time. I was seriously struggling with my body image issues. I was not in a good place mentally and her books made me feel so good about myself and they just made me at a time when I was feeling so epically shitty, they made me so happy. And I love that with my whole heart. I think that it's amazing that romances can do that, that books can do that, where I was at such a low place and it just brought me up so much. And SJ Tilly, all of her books feature plus size heroines and the she has multiple different series. I think my favorite of hers is the Alliance series which is a mafia series that features morally gray men in the mafia and plus size heroines who they love with their whole hearts and I also really love Latte Darling from her which is a age gap. She is supposed to be going on a date with a guy but his father shows up instead and she ends up having a romance with the father and it's so freaking good amazing like age gap daddy romance. I'm reading her Sin series now which is actually I think her first series that she ever read, uh, wrote and I'm really enjoying that one. It's a little less 
dark than the Alliance series but has the same type of like stern obsessive heroes in it which I love and I, she also has a hockey series that I've started reading. I read the first one and a half in that series. I have to finish it and I've just absolutely loved her so much. She also has a couple of novellas that I've read and all of them feature plus size heroines. All of them feature heroes who adore the heroines so fucking much and make the heroines feel so good about themselves. I love the fact that th with her plus size heroine she has ones that love their body so much that are so confident and then she also has ones that are a little bit more insecure about themselves and I think it's just a very realistic portrayal of a plus size heroine and it makes me so happy and I'm so glad that I read her especially at the time that I needed to and if you are feeling bad about your body or struggling in any way and need to read a plus size heroine to make yourself feel a little bit better I highly recommend SJ Tilly she's so good the next one that I have is Elizabeth Helen they are a sister writing duo and they re write the Bonded by Thorns series um which is the Beasts of Briar series and so I've only read two of their books they only have two books but I love them so much so I had to put them on this list the Beasts of Briar series is a unfinished series which is a reverse harem Beauty and the Beast retelling and it features five fey men and the heroine and it's so good. I have had such a good time reading this. It's fantasy and so fun. I love the heroes. I love how distinctive the personalities of each of the heroes are. I love the developing relationship with the heroine and each of the heroes which is so different and so fun and I'm excited to see where this series goes. The third one came out recently and I have to read it. It's on my Kindle right now and I haven't gotten to it yet but I'm so so happy with the way this series is going. I love it so much and I'm sad that I have to wait so freaking long for the next one but I'm still so happy with the series and definitely definitely recommend it. The next one that I have is Liz Tom Ford. Liz Tom Ford wrote Mile High and The Right Move which are the two books that I've read from her. She also has Caught Up which I haven't gotten to yet. I own the audiobook but I just haven't gotten to it yet which is a reoccurring theme in this video. I have so many books to get to and I just have so little time but Liz Tom Ford writes really really amazing romances. I love especially The Right Move. I love that book with my whole heart. It is so good. Ryan Shea is the type of man that I want in my real life. Where is he? Call me up because I need him in my life. Um, and even the hero in book one whose name I believe is Xander, I really really like him and I love the heroines. They're all really badass and strong and it's just such good romances that make you feel so great and they're so well written and well developed. Uh, my only problem that I had with Mile High at all was that it was a little long but that's it and I think that's amazing and I love the way that her romances are written. Then I have Emily Rath who is the author of Pucking Around. Pucking Around is one of my favorite books of this year. I love it so much. It is a reverse harem hockey romance and it is so good. It is a long ass book but it is so well written. It has each of the characters perspectives and you get so deep into their feelings, into their emotions and they have amazing communication and their relationship is just so realistic to me and their HEA is one that I actually believe that will work and I ended up reading Pucking Around. I read all, I read the novella that goes before it, I read Pucking Around, I read both of the Pucking Ever After volumes, and I read uh, the second book in the series which is Pucking Wild, and I'm so excited for the third book which is Pucking Sweet which comes out next year, and another one that I talked about on my anticipated releases video, but I love Emily Rath so much now and I want even more from her. I'm so looking forward to Pucking Sweet, I'm looking, I, I would even be happy with more Pucking Ever After volumes because because I'm not one that usually likes to read like HEA novellas, like um, epilogues, but I love the Price family so much that I devoured the Bucking Ever After volumes and I just think that they're such good books, they're such good characters and 
you know that it's a good book when you connect with the characters so strongly and that's what I do with the characters from from Emily Rath's books and I'm just so happy with them. Okay so the last one that I have is Jagger Cole. Jagger Cole I just recently learned is a male romance author. I was shocked when I learned that. I don't read a lot of books by men but Jagger Cole writes a mafia series that I really loved that I became obsessed with a couple months ago or last month I don't even remember at this point but they write um, the books that start with Deviant Hearts that's the first book in the series and they're all mafia romances and I loved them so much that I had to put him on this list because I became obsessed with that series and I'm definitely gonna go back and read more and they like side characters from that series have their own series so I'm definitely gonna go and read those characters books and more from Jagger Cole and so I wanted to put him on this list because I did just become obsessed with that series last month so I had to put him on this list and then I know I said Jagger Cole was the last one but I do want to give a slight shout out a slight mention to Rena Kent I am currently absolutely obsessed with the Legacy of God series and I just binged the entire series in like a week less than a week and so because of that I do want to put her give her like a, men a mention on this list. I haven't read anything other than the Legacy of God series um, and I'm not sure how I feel about going back and reading the 30 something books that she has about the parents from the Legacy of God series but I am debating it and thinking about it and because of that and because I will probably be reading more from her in 2024 I do want to mention her on this list because I'm obsessed with Legacy of Gods right now so that's a super dark romance series and I get like I said I'm obsessed with it so I wanted to give her just like a little mention but that is the last one for this video that's the last author that I have I read so many amazing new authors in 2023 and I'm hoping that I continue that in 2024 it's always one of my main goals for the year to read new authors and to discover new authors and I am so happy that I was able to do that in 2023 I hope I can continue doing that in 2024 my new author challenge is one of my favorite things to do throughout the year and I'm just really happy with the ones that I got in 2023. So that's gonna be it for this video. Let me know down in the comments below who your favorite author from this year was and who you think that I need to read if you know that I haven't read them yet. Let me know who I should start reading in 2024. But that's gonna be it for this video. So like if you liked it, subscribe, stick around, see more content from me, and I hope that you have the absolute best day.